On the road. On the road again. On the road again for our last for our sight last to sight. Leg of the, our 10 day excursion. That's right. To the Outer Banks. To the Outer Banks. Right. So we previously were at Huntington State Beach Park. Huntington Beach State Park in South Carolina. We drove up to New Bern and now we're heading towards the Outer Banks. Yes. Um, we left at 1030. Again, excitingly on time. <laughs> um, not that we care about time that much, but we wanted to get some things in, as we said previously. And get to the campsite before their office closed. Right. So, we got on the road, we drove for a while, and we needed lunch. And mm -hmm. where did we stop? Hocuson Lakes Wildlife Refuge. Yeah. National Wildlife Refuge? Mm, something like that. Yes. So we ate lunch in the van, and... Nothing then, exciting, just sandwiches, yeah. so... And then we went for a walk around the refuge. It was really cool. That's a road. <laughs> so we, we every time we drive down our banks, we come across this road and we say, Oh, that rest area is the one we should have stopped at, not the last one. Well, today we did it. So we get back to the to the van after a little quick walk, and Nat went inside to see if they have any stamps or any any souvenirs for the spot. And I'm sitting here with Ginger, who was sitting on the driver or on the passenger seat, just chilling while we were out for a walk. I open up her little cat backpack, and she crawls in and just starts to relax taking a little nap. You went inside I and, did. and you got to meet the people that oh, yeah. work there. And it, my well, favorite quote. Well, I went quote, inside to get a cancellation on our National Parks passport. One we weren't expecting. One we were not expecting, but when I saw that they had like a little gift shop and I could see the little symbols for the passport stuff, mm -hmm. I was like, oh, I bet they have a stamp here. And they did. Um, and I got some postcards. And maybe a magnet? I think a magnet, yeah. I don't know, yeah. something, a sticker. Um, and there was this lovely retired couple there and that they volunteer there in exchange for a free RV site on Phelps Lake um, that looks out onto the water. And they told you what might be my favorite quote that I heard through mm. this whole thing. Because you, you said that, again I was in the van so I heard this through oh, you, okay. but you said that they said the oh. wildlife refuges are for the animal, the national parks are for the people. Yes. <laughs> Which is a great quote. It is a great quote. And that is why increasingly, as you'll see by the end of this video, we are really liking the refuges. Yeah. And then we went to Wright Brothers. Memorial. Wright Brothers Memorial is where the very first flight right. so you see happened. The Orville and Wilbur Wright, born yeah. in Ohio, were you know working on their invention and, and their bike shop, and they uh, they needed testing. It was you know the land up in Ohio was hard, so they they looked around and found some random really place. Really pristine, wonderful conditions. Just random place in the state of down, North Carolina. Yeah, down down like near the beach. So they you know they really wanted to go to the beach. Down near it was, it was, the you know. gorgeous and uh, perfect conditions of the Outer Banks and of they, North Carolina. And they just happened to use their Ohio invented airplane in North they, Carolina. Which would never have happened if they did not find the pristine, amazing, perfect conditions of the Outer Banks of North Carolina. Right, but they came from the birthplace of aviation of Ohio, so. Is it really the birthplace mm -hmm. yes. of aviation if there is no flight? I don't think so. Hmm. You tell us. The first flight happened here. If the fight didn't happen, no aviation exists. But the, the, the origin of the idea came while they were in Ohio. I Everyone has ideas. Um, how many people have come up to you and said, I have an idea for an app. And you're like, oh, God. oh my God. That's unfair. No, it's totally fair. <laughs> it's totally fair. Oh, Just because yeah. you have an idea. Yeah. 
it's the implementation, it's the work, it's the iteration that makes greatness. Mm -hmm. Well. Can you tell who's from where? Mm. <laughs> we got our passport stamps. Yep. Exciting, um, which yeah. was one of the things I was really excited about because I didn't know we'd get the second one. So we got two this trip. Yeah, we did. We got the one previously at Focusing. Yeah. Um, and we got this one, which I'm very, I'm, I'm really overly excited about this whole passport stamp <laughs> system. It's fun. I it's kinda, a fun thing to do. Kinda, it's a fun way to plan travel. Yeah. I kind of just wanted to get all the stamps. I know. I want to get a bunch of But we walked around. We saw the, this, the model plane yeah. that they have. And they have that inside, and then there's uh, outside they have stones to mark right. the various lengths at which the first flight, the first four flights, occurred. Flown by Ohio, Wilbur, and Orville. What, right. is, what are the chances that like flight was actually invented somewhere else and America just claimed? It probably was. I'm pretty sure it was. I think there's a French guy. Anyway, there's another hill, the Kill Devil Hill, and there's a monument on top of there yep. um, to go up, and so... We just ran out of time to go up there. Also, you didn't take me up on the offer to run the length of the fourth flight. Nope, I didn't. I didn't want to do it really. It was. I you, called his bluff. You called my bluff. So yeah, then we uh, drove south to the, to Rodanthe. When you cross some of the bridges, you come out onto these like smaller, narrower areas of the Outer Banks, and there's just sand. Yeah. If you didn't know any better, which you, you, it's impossible to not know this because you just came over a huge bridge, but if you didn't know any better, you wouldn't know that you're that close to water. Yeah. And the map makes sides. it look like you're on this thin strip of land, and you are, but right. you can't see. Sometimes you can't see the water. Right. It's kind right. of weird, but um, cool. And, and sometimes the water will come up, and it'll, like I think this time, yeah. the water was on half of the road. Yeah, and, there's a lot of yeah. overwash, hence the increasing number of bridges right. on Highway 12. Anyway, we drove down the long road, it was fun to get to yeah. Rodanthe. It's a gorgeous drive, yeah. absolutely. Um, and then, yeah, we got to KOA, KOA Rodanthe and got checked in, taken to our site, got set up, went out to the beach. Right, at, right, right at before sun. sunset. Yeah. Okay. And it was really interesting because it was kind of hazy that night. So the sunset, yeah. we were on the east side of the of the island. So oh, the yeah. sun was setting on the west side. Oh, remember the clouds were really low. And the clouds were really low. The clouds low. were yeah. like on the horizon. Yeah, but our spot was a short walk to the beach oh, too. Like yeah. we had maybe like less than 100 yards to the entrance. Oh yeah. It, it was, was very quick. Right, right there. Um, and we had full hookups, and um, yeah. Yeah, it was a nice speed. It was nice. Although the one thing, the we got really lucky with leveling this trip. I think all three spots were level. I don't were think they? we we I don't think we pulled yeah, out our leveling, right. but the K the the Rodanthe KOA had a like a little edge. Oh, so yeah. like they had like a concrete area that was level, thankfully. Yeah. But then this picnic table was down, like six inches down. And we tripped off of this I thing mean, it's, so many times. I mean, I'm torn because without the the gravel or the concrete, we you have sand. And right. if, when it rains, and that's not a great situation. But then because the sand doesn't stay, you have these drop-offs that happen. So I don't really actually know what the solution is. What did we do that night? I don't know. We did a lot during the day, so we probably chilled out. I'm pretty sure, yeah, because we're probably tired. Yeah. Yeah. The next day, day before Eve, New Year's Eve, um, I went out to the beach. Yeah. Um, there, I was gonna do macro photography. I had my macro attachment onto my lens. I get out there, and I was gonna do it on shells. I get it out there, and there's no shell. There's like not. This isn't a beach comb, uh, a very good right, beach comb right. the beach. But there were surfers, <laughs> so I head back. And I grab our 100 to 400, right. and I got some picture. I got a few pictures of surf. There were waves, but they were choppy. They were difficult to ride, so they right. didn't catch a lot. But they were out there. And you got your pipers, sandpipers. Oh, I got the sandpipers. That was super fun because yeah. they run in when the waves go back, get some snacks, and then run back out as the waves come out. Right. It's so fun to watch them. There are a lot of birds at this campsite. Yeah. 
um, Ginger finally got excited about the bird. Oh, right. She loves watching YouTube bird videos. Yeah. But we've been having a hard time getting her excited about birds at campsites. A little bit of a diversion here. This trip, we had a new unique experience with our cat. So we keep her in her backpack when we're driving. Yeah. And as soon as we stop, we open the door and she's like, I'm out of here. Yeah. I forget when it happened. It, I don't think it, I think it happened early on. Cause it, I think it happened at New Bern. I think it definitely was at New Bern. She started hanging out in her- In her backpack. In her backpack. Um, and she spent Which a lot- Which she's never of, done before. And she spent a lot of time in her backpack for the whole trip. She liked it. Yeah. She likes being in the backpack unless it's zipped up. <laughs> that is outside of any of the timeline that we're describing here, but I just, Hold it on. just hit me. I think at this point, it was a weird time because we were eight days in. I we think tired. the tiredness was still getting to us, so we, we had a little fight. We did, and the, we didn't record the fight. We're not going to get into the details of it, but that's something that's missing from a lot of like van life or RV life videos yeah. is that, yeah, you do fight. Yeah. It's yeah. not a perfect time all the time. A while back, we had listened to a, one of Tig Notaro podcast episodes, and Kristen Bell was on, and, and her and her husband and their kids have a huge, like really expensive, like tour bus type right. RV. And she said, you know, you can't fight that much on the road. You have to, you have to resolve it. You have to figure it out because you're in this tight space. Right. Of course, their tight space is a lot bigger than our tight space. Yeah. But compared to their home, I'm sure it's right. tight. Sure. And, you know, you have a choice of what you're going to do in moments like that. And you're... <laughs> It's not going to be any fun to just sit there and pout or try to have silence right. treatment or anything right. like that. So we just, I don't know how we figured that out, but we moved on faster than we normally would. Yeah. I, think. I think I remember why we were tired. Oh. The night before that, the fire alarm went off. It was like three in the morning yeah. and our fire alarm went off. And well, okay. We have two alarms in our right. van. One smoke is alarm. a smoke alarm and the other is a carbon monoxide. Right. The very first thing I did was open the window on my side. Right, right. We had no smoke. We couldn't find anything. So we got all the manuals and read through everything. We did figure out that it was the smoke one in the back. Because of the way it beats. Right, right. But we we were up for another hour or so. Because we were looking through the looking manual. Looking through the manual, trying to figure out what it meant. And I learned that these fire alarms, these smoke alarms, need to be, uh, apparently need to be maintenance weekly, which surprised me because usually it's monthly with house fire alarms. And what can happen is dust can get yeah. in them, and the dust can trigger them. We realized that we didn't have extra batteries if it was a battery problem. So we went. I went and got some extra batteries just to, to be safe. I went to look at the sound side of the island, and then we decided to go get coffee. Mm -hmm. And we walked, what did you say, it was like a mile? I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I guess. Well, sure. the other thing to, to note, though, is this time of year, a lot of things weren't open, so it was yeah. very quiet. But also a lot of things were abandoned because we, we saw this abandoned amusement park. I think a lot of things were abandoned. I think well, one amusement park was abandoned. But it was a very large one, so like we passed a lot of it on our walk. Yeah, I mean, there's yeah. a go-kart track and a pool with a lot of those... Uh, handles. Handles. To, yeah. Like a lot. I don't know what it for is For that still. size of a pool. And there was water and slides. And a big water slide. Yeah. But it was a cool... Like if you want to take a picture of an abandoned place without, without trespassing, us. you can get a lot of photos yeah. like that look yeah. like that cool like abandoned place photo. Yeah. Um, uh, well, it's like that nature reclaiming too. Yeah, like the, which, the, the, the grass yeah. was growing. But we went to the coffee place, which was really cool. There was a lot of candy and a lot of supplies. Oh, we got yeah. some stickers there. I got a bracelet there. Yeah. There, it was more than candy and coffee. It was uh, like a little gift shop. It was really cute. Right. Oh, the KUA campground that we stayed at was huge. Oh, so much bigger than New Bern. So even if you only wanted to walk around the campground, you could. There's cabins, deluxe cabins on stilts there's, because of the hurricane. There's also yurts. You saw yurts. Oh, yeah. They were like tent yurts, which is yeah. actually kind of fun. And then they had all the kids stuff. They had a huge pool, a hot tub, the jumping pad, a dog park. Uh, oh, the gosh, dog park. So much stuff yeah. there. Great beach access. So it was my favorite part, I think. The third day, New Year's Eve, we took a long walk on the beach. Right. And we walked almost down to the Rodanthe Pier. Yeah, we um, almost got there. 
but it started getting close to the houses. So a lot of the houses there yeah, were right, right on the there. right on the water in some ways, especially at high and tide. And then there were some fishermen. We didn't really yeah. want to interrupt them. Yeah, so. But there's also lots of shells. So we were able to do some beach combing. It was mostly like scallop shells mm. um, and scallop and clam shells. Right. And then there was rain. And there were surfers. Oh, there were Before surfers. we got the rain, yeah, there, there were surfers. surfers. So, um, but before the rain, I went back out because I, I still wanted to put my feet in the water. Oh, that's right. I had called our niece and she said, go in the water. And I was like, well, it's cold. <laughs> so I went out and put my feet in the water and sent her video of it. And as I'm doing that, the first wave hits me and I'm like, eh, not so bad. And then I see the sandpipers. So I'm like, ooh, sandpipers. I was going to turn to take them. And then another wave hits me. <laughs> and crashes about halfway up my calf uh -huh. <laughs> and that was enough for me so i went back in and finally used our uh, outdoor spray on oh. my feet to get the sand <laughs> yeah, off we haven't used it yet so so and then it rained yeah it rained uh, we hung out in the van for new year's do i need a large straight i do need a large straight give me a five no not a two give me a five yeah. <laughs> It was now 2023, January 1st. It was. Yeah. And we got on the road pretty Still. early, pretty early. Probably 1030. Yeah. Know, yeah. I think it was a little closer and it was, it was really foggy that morning. It was very foggy it was that very morning. Very foggy. And as, I love fog. Yeah. So I was pretty excited. And this is where we saw a fog we bow. We saw a fog bow. It was, it's really cool. I, and then the weird, I think the coolest part was you see it for so long, it seems like in the distance, it seems untouchable, it seems like yeah. you're not going to reach it. And then suddenly you drive through it and it's over. And it's clear and there's no more fog. And like, yeah, it was awesome and I would yeah. love to do it again. The day before we went to the abandoned amusement park, I said, hey, I'd really like to go back there and shoot some, or take some film photos. But then I was like, actually, no, I want to take, I want to go take photos of that building that's right at the top of Oregon Inlet. And you're like, yeah, we should go there. So this is, I'm pretty sure from looking on the map, still part of Pea Island, this is the southern part of Oregon Inlet, and there's an old life-saving house. And so we parked there and we walked around, and I don't know how to say this without being too extreme, but this might have been the best stop we made. This might have been the best part of the trip. This might have been the best part of the trip. Well, it's, it's a tie kind of because Huntington Beach was right, yeah. so great. We started and ended at the but best place. But honestly, this is so great because there's these dunes that you can walk over yeah. and you pass them, and by dunes, it's not quite as grand and great as Jockey's Ridge, but it's still really awesome. Right. And then you get over there and there's a beach and there was almost something of a tide pool, but it was really cool. This little shallow area of water, there's tons of shells, tons of them. So many shells. The thing about Oregon Inlet is it's a gap between the islands of the Outer Banks, because Outer Banks is kind of just this strand of islands. Yeah, um, and the inlet there is like, where the sound and the ocean are crashing. So you have like these really interesting waves there. Yeah. And then yes. we're just standing on the beach, like walking around the top of the the park, looking over the inlet and birds. And apparently there were dolphins there that we didn't see, but so we finished that up. Ginger got another break. She did get another break. <laughs> she got to hang out. We left the, oh, she liked it. It was warm now. So we let the AC on for her. So this yes. is a wild trip where we started with heater all the time. And then we ended with AC. It was already noon and we were hungry. We were, I was getting hangry. We were getting hangry. So we stopped in Nags Head for yeah. some food. And then we got on the road and headed back. Yeah. And that was our trip. Yeah, that was it. So do you want to talk about like what we learned on our trip? Yeah, I think we learned a lot. Yeah. One thing that we learned is the, the planning, the grocery stops, like the doing the trip I think we did really good at. Mm -hmm. I think the the biggest thing that stands out to me, which I'm sure you're, you're thinking too, is the weather. We we planned this trip in what, October? Yeah, we booked everything right. a month or two in advance. We didn't know that there would be a, a once in a generation Arctic blast that would well, freeze the East Coast. Like, I think we did a really good job prepping for it, right? Like we, mm -hmm. we had water when we needed water, we had warm clothes. Which led to other frustrations I think we'll talk about next, but I think one thing we learned is in winter camping, we need to be a little bit more nimble. And, and mm -hmm. by nimble, I mean we don't need to have plans months in advance. 
there was a part of me that was thinking about booking like the mountains for Christmas. That would have been a huge mistake. Yeah. That was a way worse situation. There, as of a couple weeks ago, there were still people without water in Asheville right. and that kind of stuff. Right. So that would have been no bueno. There's also just I need to deal better with the noise. I've already been working on the mattress. Um, I'm gonna bring up I'm the mattress. I'm already working on a new um, a plan for the extra water because it, it's not just winter. I'm, I'm realizing we absolutely need to have a jug for water in case something's wrong with the water at a campground, you know, we need to have, we need to plan for that. And yes, it will mean something is a little bit in our way, but, um, and also water needs to be safe. So we've got, I think we've got a plan for that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then in bikes and we need yeah. to work on the bikes. One of my bikes is broken right now and that's frustrating, but the bikes will give us more flexibility in terms of being able to get around. Um, and just do more things yeah. in the area, right? Because we love the parks. We love going to Huntington State Beach Park. We like exploring it. The bike would extend what we can explore. So yeah. I think having the bikes is really a key thing. I also, I didn't need as many clothes as I took because you, I don't, I can repeat outer layers more. And I did not need to take all, all the pairs of jeans that I took. Yeah. I just didn't. And... So. I, I have the same. My, my packing wasn't quite as frustrating as, as, as it looked yours was, as it looked that yours was, because I basically just had mine yeah. stuffed in areas and it was pretty easy. But um, he doesn't get as cold and hot as quickly yeah. and have a hard time coming back from that as I do. Right. Again, medical issues don't need your diagnosis in the comments. Um, I mean, I know that's what's going on yeah. with me. So, And it's also not like a, cr- a, a terrible thing that like I took up a little extra space like in the bathroom yeah. with my clothes and stuff. Yep. Um, because I just need it. I'm proud of what we did. I think we did a good trip. Mm-hmm. It was a lot. <laughs> yeah. I We just thought that we would have a balmy 10-day holiday at the beach. But yeah. Mother Nature had other ideas. Oh, also, I'm Josh. I'm Nat. Should we talk about the Airstream rule? Oh. This should, this, yes. We have a rule. We, ha- we developed not, it's this. Not, we developed. It's not a rule. It's, it's a scoring mechanism. It's a, it's a theory in progress. Okay. It's a hypothesis. We are in mm-hmm. the process of testing. Go on. Mm-hmm. We have, we're developing a concept that we're calling the Airstream Index. Here's the thing. We're not gonna name names of campgrounds, but we're increasingly realizing that our enjoyment on camping trips is proportional to whether or not we see an airstream at the campground. Yes, we're, we're, we, we think that if this is proven true, that this AI will help improve camping for everyone. This is not an AI, this is like- Airstream index, AI. Is, I missed that! (laughs) Yes. I'm like, this is field work. We're going out. We're doing observations. (laughs) You got me. Yeah. Um, yeah. Airstream Index, if you want to collect your own data, let us know. Well, that reminds me that why I was even extra tired, more extra t- I might be tired still. <laughs> still catching because up. Because the night before that, my phone just randomly started playing YouTube at three in the morning. It was a Key and Peele sketch, so I wasn't totally mad about it. But um, yeah, what, what's up with that Siri? What's the deal with that? Maybe in my sleep, I was like, hey Siri, play Key and Peele. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs>